When I seen the fact that he had hit bottom and it didn't necessarily catch right away, I'm looking at him and he reminds me of Dwayne Wade or Tyreek Evans. Emmanuel Kebea Moutier, born March 5th, 1996. Today's feature, at 18 years old, signed a million dollar contract to turn pro and by 26, he was out the league. Last season, he received a 10-day contract with the Sacramento Kings and played in just two games before he was waived and has yet to be picked up this season. Leaving high school, Moutier had huge expectations to fit right in and possibly even dominate the era's point guards with his size and physical gifts. In high school, he had insane potential at 6'5", with a 6'8 wingspan, and was taller and longer than the average point guards. Add to that, at the time, he was explosive and usually finished above the rim or with a crafty layup around the defender. As far as passing, he also showed adequacy in that area. Some would say it was the featured part of his offensive arsenal. Along with his transition play, pick and roll game, and his potential on defense at his size, made Moutier once a possible top prospect in the draft. Instead of the college route, as you know, he headed to China for his one-year removed draft eligibility in hopes he could build on his draft stock and work on his weaknesses on a professional level before entering the draft. Ones that included his perimeter shooting, decision making leading to turnovers, and being a consistent defender. Six seasons in the NBA has shown that at the very least, those are still a work in progress, some would say even regressed when he now has experience and should be a player right about to enter his basketball prime. To me, Moutier's story is a good example of how prospects more nowadays neglect one of the most important factors to having success at anything, development. Some players are blessed to develop much faster than others, but most don't. What happens is outside talk about a prospect starts to seep in, and whether his team hears them or the player does themselves, they start to believe in them and actually feed into the expectations. Human nature along with society can encourage athletes, specifically basketball players, to always believe in yourself and your ability to do anything once you put your mind to it. And that whatever you do, you must believe you're the best at it. But we're rarely taught to understand reality and also that you can only own that belief if you've done the necessary things, like put in the most work and are lucky enough to have developed according to plans. In Moutier's case, he had a great start on his journey to the NBA. He fit right into the mold as an NBA point guard, but he may have made a few bad decisions that stunted his growth as a player and hasn't been able to meet the expectations he had in high school, and at this point, his chances to are most likely over. How does that much potential turn into an Emmanuel Moutier? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. Y'all ready to keep this thing moving? Emmanuel Moutier is a 6'5 point guard born in the Congo whose family came to America escaping the resulting conditions of the Second Congo War and settled in Texas where he first played his high school ball for Grace Prep, later transferring to Prime Prep in Dallas. His high school hoop mixtape is still one of the best I've seen that showcased everything needed to potentially have a great NBA career at the point guard position. He wasn't extremely fast, but had a good pace and at the time, still had an explosive first step leading into an athletic finish. That and he was a great passer. He made those passes where you could tell he loved making plays for others and had great court vision and ability to see plays before they develop. If this Moutier made it to the league, I still think he would have been a solid player, at least still in the NBA. Of course, by his third season, we saw he was a completely different player, mostly because of these three growth stunts. Stunt number one, the ankle injury in China. Oh, everybody wanted to recruit him. I mean, you go to a game and watch him play and he makes everybody better. He respects the game. In high school, Moutier committed to play for SMU and coach Larry Brown. He chose them over all the big name schools like Kansas, Kentucky, and Arizona, not to mention in-state Baylor that recruited the high school All-American the most. 
He decided to forego that and turn pro, signing a one-year $1.2 million deal with the Southern Tigers of the Chinese Basketball Association. It was met with some criticism and in hindsight, I don't think it was a great move and not one that hurt his stock, but where it did hurt was him sustaining a significant ankle injury, one he missed three months for and on-court development because of and may have lingered and changed the player he was supposed to be before even stepping foot in the NBA. Injuries, as much as you try not to think about them when you return, they make you a different player physically and most definitely mentally at least for some time until you've proven to yourself the injury no longer is troubling from a person who's had a significant ankle injury it seems to others a very common problem players have and not one that weighs that heavy on your future but thinking about pushing off, landing, pivoting, jumping, defending, all those can cause a player to move, anticipate, and react differently when he returns and it's most likely because you don't want to have such a seemingly small injury hurt your play again. After the mental, have you healed correctly physically and in time that you still have the confidence in being who you were before? Moutier missing three months because of his ankle injury said that he wasn't right physically and I think that took away his quick first step and some of the explosion at the rim he had in high school. In the NBA he seemed slow and rarely finished above the rim. He was the seventh pick in 2015 to the Denver Nuggets and according to his draft workouts he looked to have fully healed physically. But over time, I think that ankle still bothered him and made him now a step slower and a lot less confident. He's played the most regular season games of his career as a rookie and since then, games played have deteriorated. He would suffer more injuries over his career but this one, I think, set the plate. Also, had he never went to China and never gotten injured, he just may have been a higher draft pick and not end up on the Nuggets who turned out to provide his second growth stunt. Stunt number two, drafting Jamal Murray. I'm not trying to prove to nobody but myself really uh, that I can do what I, what I set my mind to do. Another growth stunt for Mounier was the Nuggets taking another point guard the very next year in the draft that turned out to be exactly what the team wanted from Mounier. Both bigger guards that could score the ball and highly regarded prospects prior to the NBA. Jamal Murray came in and was instantly a better player with a much bigger ceiling. He shot better immediately, more efficient, and even though not quite the passer, his other strengths made him a much better fit for the Nuggets. He also played in all 82 games as a rookie and didn't have the injury history Moutier had. Of course, the Nuggets took notice of this and the season after the two played together in 16-17, they committed to Jamal being their point guard of the future and traded Moutier to the New York Knicks after 42 games in 17-18. That season, Jamal Murray came into his own and was quickly showing that move was the right one for the team. His potential as a scorer and deep shooter was obviously better and over the years as the NBA became more and more of a shooter's league, Murray's skills became better equipped for the starting NBA point guard job and Moutier's either stayed the same or regressed. Stunt number three, skills never blossomed. When you draft a player, I'm guessing it's like gambling in a lot of ways. You don't know what he'll become or if taking him and passing on someone else will become the right move. All you have is a likely chance you bet on and put everything in place to have that decision work out. One thing you expect is the player to improve on the skills he already has and has shown potential to develop further. One of Moutier's weaknesses coming into the draft was his perimeter shooting. While he didn't seem to be a bad shooter, it was difficult to tell with him not going the traditional college route and that way there'd be something to compare him to. He has a smooth form so no signs showed he would be poor in that area as it became a must perimeter players be at least adequate shooting off the catch or the bounce. For his career, he shot 32% from three and because of it, he's passed up taking open threes which could be just as bad as a missed shot for an offense. His finishing around the rim has also ranked in the bottom of the league consistently over his career at 40% from the field 
and low 50s within 3 feet of the basket. He usually settled for a close fadeaway when he's cut off, which he misses consistently as well, and it's made him a liability on offense. He was also supposed to grow into an elite defender, and that probably has been his worst attribute over his career, as he's usually caught up on screens, doesn't use his wingspan to get deflections, and average .7 steals a game for his career. That's like basically standing there on offense. All in all, was Emmanuel Moutier a bus? Yes sir, a huge one. At 25, after being a lottery pick, you aren't supposed to be signing 10 days with one of the worst teams and still get waived by the end of it. He's now 26 and the NBA seemed to have moved on from his potential and now he's left to journey overseas. He had the physical tools to be a solid to great NBA point guard. But for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out.